Welcome back you guys, this is Mark with NC Engravers and today we're going to be talking about barrel porting, right? Porting slides, porting barrels. This is a service that we've done in the past, we've done a handful of them, most of them have been my, my own or they've been local people to me here in North Carolina and we've never really offered this service as just a standard service, something that you could process from the web page now. Of course, that's changed. You are able to get the service now through the web page. There's going to be a lot of content in this video. There's a lot of different styles of porting on the market, and I want to kind of go through those with you. I want to explain what they are, the advantages, the disadvantages, and then of course, this will help you make your decision on maybe what you want to do. Um, maybe it's, maybe you want to go through us and have something done, or maybe you want to buy something, right? So we don't sell any parts, so we're not going to uh, straight up encourage any uh, vendors to hit the top of that list in this video, but uh, we are going to use some of those named companies and explain them a little bit better. So um, my recommendation would be to take some notes if you're unsure what you want to do or you're just kind of following through. There might be some stuff you want, might want to write down. There might be some things that you didn't know. So let's first talk about what do we have here. What's, what's our goal? What are we trying to achieve? And then let's go into some of this other stuff. So we've got a Glock 19 Gen 5 and the only change that we're going to be doing to this setup is a top window and then of course barrel porting. Now, if you watched our last YouTube video, it was a special build for a Glock 43X, and we ended up doing three cuts on the top up there. This is gonna be very similar, um, except we're gonna be doing four. Now, I know there's a chance that you haven't seen our last video or time has gone by, and you're not gonna go back and sort through that. So we're gonna kinda of sorta of start at the beginning and explain it the best. So what we're going for is essentially a very close design to the Glock 18, 18C, fully automatic pistol that was created way back in the day. And I, I don't know the exact years, but I would say 25 to 30 years ago. It's been a long time since um, that pistol was ever manufactured and it really wasn't manufactured ever for civilian use. And uh, even uh, saying it lightly, I'm not even sure that many of them have ever been imported uh, into the country. Um, those guns themselves are just straight up flat shooters, uh, minimizing the recoil to the absolute maximum and giving you the best follow-up shot because it's a fully automatic pistol, right? So uh, that's kind of the design of what we're going for. And so we're gonna go for a single top window and then we're gonna have four cuts on the top. Of course, our design is gonna be slightly different than what you would see on the traditional 18C as we're gonna be doing a rectangular window. They've got a different kind of window cut. So we're gonna end up doing something a little bit different, um, just sticking with the, the regular rectangle and then running our four cuts. One of the interesting things about our cuts versus maybe something else that you'd see out on the market and I'm going to kind of lay it down like this and maybe we can explain it a little bit better and that is a lot of companies that are out on the market that are porting barrels whether you bought an aftermarket barrel or you sent your gun in to have it ported what they're doing is they're porting the barrel and the gases are going straight up like this okay so they've got some sort of port that they've cut in straight down like at a 12 o'clock motion like this and the gases are going essentially back up just like this okay that's not exactly what we're going to be doing on our porting our porting is going to be a little bit more where the ports are actually going to be more like this okay if i can lay this down so there's going to be four they're going to be angled to the front and the idea behind that is, is whenever this slide itself uh, ends up cycling, the barrel ends up kind of protruding out. So that barrel end up kind of, kind of ends up going like this. The slide goes straight back, but the barrel goes up like this. And of course, we're going to be porting that barrel in the opposite um, reaction. So obviously, what we want to do is get the best results off that porting. Our porting is going to be very, very close to what you would see on the 18C, which is just once again a beast of a pistol. And the idea is that if um, if we can get the porting down uh, where it's anywhere near functionally uh, accurate to the 18C in semi-automatic form, it should be amazing since those guns are in full auto. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other ports that are out on the market and let's talk about how they may differ from, from what we're doing. Okay, so we're gonna kind of put this here. So what we see out on the market is we see a lot of barrel comp combos or just comp, right? So you are able to buy just a straight up comp and I'll show you the whole piece here in a second. So if you've got a threaded barrel, of course this is a Radian, um, but if you've got a threaded barrel, you take some sort of a comp Parker machine maybe, or one of the other ones, a disruptive defense, and you would thread that on and then you would pin it to your threaded barrel and then boom, you're done, right? So there's a lot of different versions of how they how they clamp on. Some have stuff that clamps onto to a, a rail. So most of them thread onto a barrel. There's lots of different versions out there. Once again, this 
this is the one I'm getting ready to show you guys. This is the Radiant Ramjet Radian uh, afterburner setup for Glock. Um, ballparking, 350 to 400 would be the standard pricing on this. So this is sort of how it works. So this barrel would go in your gun. Of course, this sticks out the end. This slips over the end. The ports are in the end of the barrel. Then we have uh, matching ports in their comp that's here. And then, of course there is a pin that would pin the side. So there's a screw that screws in and that keeps everything from rotating and turning and things like that. So this is a fairly expensive setup. I know this is probably one of the most expensive. You can get you know stuff cheaper. You could certainly buy a, a, just a comp on the end to your already threaded barrel that you own. And it would be way, way cheaper to go that direction because you could get you know, uh, you know, fill in the blank with whatever one you want to get. There's tons of them on there. You can go from a no-name on eBay all the way up to, you know, an aluminum agency, um, which is a whole nother story. I wouldn't recommend aluminum parts as comps because they pit and they just, they get stuck on barrels. So this is a premium setup. Um, obviously, there's some other Parker Mountain things that are out there. Um, I use that one as a big name. Of course, there's, there's others that are out there, but that's probably another big one that you guys have heard of. So this is what would be like a barrel comp combo paired together. That's sort of kind of how that setup is. The other thing that we see a lot on the market is a comped uh, slide itself. So like on a macro, they actually have where inside of the slide, they have ports that are, that are built into the slide. So when the bullet exits the barrel, it uses this for, uh, you know, basically to, to reflect um, the pressure downward, right? So it's giving you the, the comping abilities and it's built into the slide. Um, it, so that's kind of how that's designed. Um, for those of you that are unsure and or don't know, so we slide this to the rear and as you can see, the barrel itself is not, not ported. There's no porting in the barrel. It's only in the, uh, the slide itself. So bullet would exit barrel, use this for its uh, comp abilities, and then, of course, it would, it would exit the slide as a whole. Um, that's kind of how that works. One of the things I don't have here, there's a, there's a third version, and that would be the idea that you could get a gun that has the porting in the barrel. So we do see that a lot. Glock has obviously made those on the Gen 3s. They might have came out on the Gen 2, I think, maybe. But a Gen 3 was the, was the notorious one that most people are, are aware of. And that would be a 19C, a 17C, a, a 22C. They, they, they may have made a 21C. There was a handful of them out there that they had a port at what would kind of be the 2 and the 10. So look, if you're kind of downranging it and this is 12, you'd be at two and you'd be at 10. So there would be two um, small ports there. We see the same thing on say the Shield Performance Center, right? So we've seen this Magnaport offers that service that we've seen them do on on the SIGs um, when they when the P365s first came out. So it's not, it's not something new to the industry. There have been a lot of guns in the past where they've taken barrels and they've ported them, but they've always been ported at like kind of the, the, the two and the 10, right? They've always been on the edges. They've never been down the center. So we do see a lot of people that say, hey, you know, I really don't want my porting down the center. I really, I really don't want to be uh, losing sight of what I'm looking at when I'm shooting. You know, uh, one of the things to take into consideration is if you're buying a slide nowadays that's pre-ported, that is coming out the top. It's coming out at 12. If you're buying any kind of a comp at all, um, you know, or a comp barrel combo, it's doing the same. So this is not a this is not what would be considered a 10 on this side in a two porting. This is literally a 10 to two. It's, it's doing all of them, right? So this is all the way across from one side to the other. Um, so obviously you're getting the gases right straight up the middle. Yes, there is a, a, a little spoke in the center, but it doesn't even have a wedge to it. It's literally just a solid piece of metal. It's not even shaped like a V in the inside. So gases are coming directly straight up on it as well. So guys, you know, hopefully that's explained barrel comp uh, combos. It's explained, you know, uh, slides that already have one built in. We're not going for that. You know, what we're really going for in this type of setup is an angled serration that's inside of the, the uh, slide, uh, inside of the barrel, all together as one, nothing sticking out the end. And um, guys, there's not going to be a lot of content to show you. We're going to show you that window cut. I might show you a little, a little bit of the barrel cutting because they are cut in, in here at a very specific angle. And um, and that's kind of it. And then I want to come back and I want to talk to you a little bit about the failures of some of the other designs that are out on the market. And I say that very, very politely, but um, there are some issues with a setup like this. There are some issues with set, a setup like this. So there are things that you could see um, that you may run into as far as problems that you don't get with this setup, okay? So I'll explain that a little bit better when we come back. And then, of course, I've got something for you that you're really going to want to see.
So guys, right here, what we're doing is we're cutting a top window in the slide that's gonna align with those ports. It's gonna allow that gas to come out. Now, we're not really gonna show the barrel laser cut section. I say that mostly because we're gonna reveal that a little bit more into this video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back into what does it look like? So we ended up taking and sandblasting the slide. We recoded the slide. It is a required service. So if you wanna go back to just the black, uh, there's no charge to you, just select that during checkout. And if you you want to go with a different color then of course you can choose the other option and pick the color that you want um, more than likely if uh, you've got an MOS version like this and if it's a plastic cover we won't coat that if it's a steel cover um, that matches the slide then we will uh, we don't coat the plastic ones because they have a tendency to warp or could become uh, kind of sort of mangled in the process uh, sometimes they just don't align correctly once they've been sandblasted and cleaned so if they're plastic we leave them but if they're steel we don't we'll match them in this case I believe the customer is probably going to be running and optic, so it's not a real big deal. Of course, we've also got the barrel. So we ended up laser cutting the barrel. We've got four cuts in the top here. We've done a whole new coating on the barrel. Uh, that is another thing that is a required service. So we do want to sandblast the cut area. So where those ports have taken place, we want to sandblast it. It's going to smooth that out in case there's any kind of burrs or any kind of debris. Uh, and then of course, we're going to go and do a whole new coating on the barrel. Now I know a lot of you out there are, hey, I really just want to keep my factory coating. I don't want to go with a new one. You're not paying for this coating. It's, it's just part of the package. It's not an additional charge. So in the end, you're not coming out of pocket for a coating that maybe you don't believe in. But the idea here is that on a lot of factory barrels, even this one being a great example, um, they're kind of worn and mangled from the the, uh, from the factory as they're used, right? They're a high wear item, they're gonna wear quick. So we strip the coating, we do the new coating, it's gonna wear again, no charge to you, no loss. So it kind of makes sense that way. Um, and it kind of just allows uh, to make sure that the porting is done correctly. We don't have any issues. You get it back later and you don't have any problems. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. We haven't added any oil to the to uh, this setup. We would recommend that you do that when you get it back. Really nice setup. So uh, one of the things I want to talk about is this setup. And then I want to kind of go back into some of those other setups and maybe some of the hurdles that you would have if you went down that path. So let's jump pretty deep into this here first and foremost. So um, the idea is four cuts. Now this is subject to change. If you got a 43 or 43x it may be three if you've got um, a different gun they may be placed slightly different and let me explain that a little bit better it, during the making of this video we've had other other projects come in right so we're trying to keep it somewhat specific to a build for the video but other stuff has come in and we've got a Glock um, 34 so this is an early generation late gen 2 early gen 3 something along that line and as you can see there's a window in the top we didn't add this this is already here and the idea is when we do this porting, we probably won't pour so close to the front because as you can see, the, the actual front side is hanging over and into that window. So take that into consideration when you talk about doing some sort of barrel porting, you don't want a fiber optic, you don't want some sort of a um, site that could potentially be over the hole and cause a problem, right? So you don't want to do a, you know, a night vision site, something that's a tritium or something along that line. It could burn, um, it could become black. Now, one of the things, once again, I want to uh, make known here is that our porting is not straight up the top, right? It doesn't go straight up, it does go forward. So there's a chance that the taller the site, the more, the more dirt and debris and carbon you're gonna get on the front of that. So that's kind of one of those deals where we would recommend that you go with a site that is still on the slide and not necessarily in the slide as you would see here. Those are kind of two different uh, combos there, the way that that works. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how did this come about. Now, you guys did hear at the beginning of the video, we talked about wanting to make the, the, the style very close to the Glock 18C, right? So, and... Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of the idea here. Now, we want to have our own version of that. NC Engravers, as a business, doesn't want to just straight up clone Glock. We want to have our own little twist to that. And, of course, when the 18C came out, you know, which was technically in 96, I did a little research on that right in that era. Um, the idea is that, you know, they had limited tools, right? The industry the industry was still really early in, in on what they were, uh, you know, offering. So um, they only made two guns that I know of. In, um, in that configuration, and it's the 18C, and then they made the 24C. Now, they also made the 24C with a non-ported barrel. So I lucked out quite a while back and was able to snag one of these from a local person that was selling one. I sent it back off for black nitride. This was back when we were doing black nitride, so it looks really clean. But the idea is these are the ports, and the ports are done at an angle in there. So a lot of the, uh, the information that was needed in order to create something like this came from a product like this, right? So this is, this is what I would consider to be a new generation of this. 
these are really big ports, right? This is also a 40C, a really, um, a really long barrel, and, and it's a 40, not a 9. So, so th some of those things have changed, and, and, and I'm sure if over time Glock continued to do this, they would have revised that as they've done with the, the generations of their guns, right? So we're seeing changes in those firearms as the different generations have come out, and I could, uh, you know, without a doubt say that we would have seen the same thing happen on their barrels. It would have made some changes there. So, um, but that's kind of the point I'm making is that when you look at a, a gun like this that's got a window, the ports are really way back up in here and they've kind of spaced it out in the front. So if you have a, a, a gun that's like this, a 34, you're probably going to find that those windows, um, you know, in the barrel are going to be farther here and they're not going to be way up here. So depending on what model you send in may just be uh, what it looks like when you get it back. That stuff's subject to change and we would always encourage you to thoroughly look at the pictures on the web page because you know, a video like this may not get remade, right? This video in the future may be two or three or four years old, and the idea is that um, what we say and, and do right now may have been revised. So anything that you would process your order from the webpage, that would be the most current thing. We do want to show you exactly what it is you're ordering today, even if that is an evolving uh, style. So that's kind of where you're going to want to look at those pictures and make sure, ask those questions and things. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about... Um, a little bit more about uh, this, and then I want to go into some of the other stuff. So one of the uh, one of the things that was said at the beginning of the video that was maybe misleading, maybe not quite as accurate, or came out incorrect, um, was that hey, we're trying to build a barrel that's similar to the 18C, right? That's kind of what we're going for. And then you guys saw a video of a full auto Glock running, right? Well, one of the things that we didn't uh, lead anybody to believe at the beginning of that video was that um, that was our barrel. So we actually created the barrel for that weapon, right? We didn't create the weapon because that already existed. We had a customer that found out that Glock's just super not friendly and we get that, they're not with us either. So if you put a special request in for an 18C barrel, Glock's probably gonna tell you, yeah, we're not really gonna do that, right? So it's a hard part to find when you have that weapon already, right? Whether you've got some sort of a, something that was been built under paperwork or something that was a, a post sample, right? Those exist. So with that being said, um, they needed a barrel. So we created a barrel and then of course they ran it. So those are the results. So when you look at that first video and you're like, man, that's crazy. It's going to be super hard to do that. We already did that. This barrel that we're, we're offering as a service is that. Okay, that is what you're getting. So the idea is in a semi-automatic configuration, the usage of this, the accuracy, the follow-up shots are going to be way better than you're going to see on an auto, but the barrel is capable of supporting that sort of destructive nature, right? So we've built it, future-proofed it in the event that it was forcibly ran quick in match shooting, it can support that, right? So you're never going to run as fast as you are, obviously, with an auto with using your finger. Uh, but with that being said, the idea is that no matter how close you get, it would still support that sort of function. Pay attention um, as at the end of the video, we've got more of that barrel and that gun being ran in burst and auto modes. Really watch the recoil. Watch how it's functioning. Um, it's it's absolutely amazing, and I can only imagine uh, the usage of what you guys are going to do with yours when you get back and you want to range shoot or you want to competitively shoot or or maybe you just want to have one to have one. But the point being made is there's a lot of potential and opportunity there because the design is so much different than what else is out on the market, right? So. There's more of that to come. You guys will be able to see that a little bit more. I'm going to give some more details on what ammo was used and, and kind of that story. I want to talk to you a little bit more about those other uh, stuff that's out on the market. What's available out on the market, right? So uh, one of the other things that's available out on the market is... Um, is, is those other versions, right? So we've got barrel comp uh, setups that you could buy, whether you're just buying a comp that, that screws onto the end of your threaded barrel or you've got a, a, a setup that you bought as a whole package, Parker Machine, Radian, you know, fill in the blank, there's lots of them. The idea here is, you know, there's faults in every one of these styles um, of, of, of setups, right? Each one of these styles works a little bit different. And if you've shot enough guns in the past or you've had your hands on enough of these types of weapons, one is more of a gas redeflection, right? So when you're going with a barrel with a comp on the end, you're redirecting the gas in a, in a motion to hopefully uh, capture some lesser felt recoil, right? So um, the idea is that the bullet has already left the gun and we're redirecting that gas somewhere where we want it to go and we're in, in return, we're getting a result. The problem with it is, is that those comps 
are notorious for a couple of things. One is catching lead. So they're going to end up being absolutely slam full of lead. It's going to pit them because everything that comes out of the end of the barrel is extremely hot. I'm not saying this is destructive in nature to the pot, to the product or to the item itself because they are designed. But what I'm saying is they do sell cheaper versions that are, say, aluminum, which aren't going to hold up where they sell better ones that are steel, which is what I would recommend. So there are a couple of different forks in, in the path and in the road that you can take to get a better product, right? So those are things to take into consideration. My personal opinion is, is I stay away from the aluminum. I say that for a couple of different reasons because the aluminum ones themselves, the problem with it is, is that when they get super hot, they can sometimes somewhat weld themselves to the steel barrel, right? Stuff stretches, stuff heats up, the red Loctite that's in there locks down almost like an epoxy, and before you know it, you're done. It's a done deal. And if you're on a Glock, that can be a problem because on the Glocks, if you want to take your barrel out, or if you take your barrel out, there's a, there is a screw down inside here, which you guys can see. And that screw is what holds your front sight on, right? So there's no way around that. So at some point in time, I want to change my front sight, but I've got a barrel and I've got a comp. The idea is that I, I can't get it off. So the nature of those setups are they screw on. They usually have a set screw. They have a pin screw, depending on how, how advanced you go. And you may never get it back off. Um, I've seen them where our customers have literally said, just please destroy the comp, getting it off if you have to, but don't destroy my barrel. I'm going to put another one on. It's a waste of money. Right, so you're spending a whole lot of money. Go with the steel one or don't go with one at all, in my opinion. Um, and once again, everybody has their own opinion. They can say, I've never once had a problem. I don't know what this guy's talking about. On the other hand, there's always that other guy that you know runs his car as hard as he can every time he pulls out of the gas station and he has nothing but problems. So there are two different users in maybe the same hardware, right? So you may not have had a problem. The other guy said nothing but problems. It doesn't mean everyone's case is the same, and that goes for me as well. I may be only speaking from the, the nightmares I've seen here, but with that being said, you may not have a problem. Um, that's kind of the story behind those. Those set screws are going to make marks on your barrel. Um, if you take that off and you want to run just a thread protector, you're going to have marks on your barrel. There's a lot of little things involved with external comps. They don't align that nice. Some of them are square and blocky. They don't have tapers on the edges. They don't have round noses like the Radian. I'm not saying the Radian is like, you know, the end-all be-all, but what I am saying is like it is a premium product over some of the other ones. So it's easy to use that as a comparison when we're talking about high quality of something versus just something, right? So those are a couple things. So that's the fault of externals. So let's talk a little bit about um, ported barrels that are chuck ports. So we see those a lot where somebody would have moved the front sight, they've created a port somewhere up in this zone, and the idea is that this would reflect the gases. Technically, if they're done correctly, they would take that barrel and they would bore the barrel back to where the lands and grooves are. So when the bullet comes down, it then stops touching the lands and grooves inside the barrel and the gas comes out those ports. If they don't do that and pay attention to who you're having the work done through, if they don't do that and they just cut a bob right across the barrel, what's going to happen is there is a chance that somewhere where that land and groove is inside the barrel and it meets that port, it could peel off the jacketing and or lead and come out the top and you'll be picking it out of your face. So don't take my word on that. Go a little bit on Reddit. Read a little bit. There's a couple of really big companies. Just choose one big company. I'm not going to give you any names, but choose one big company and um, go on there and read and you'll, you'll find that. There's been plenty of people that have been like, man, I got hit in the face by a jacket because it peeled it off in the port that wasn't back uh, backboard. So make sure that when they do it, they're backboring the barrel, the lands and grooves end, and then it's just basically a, a you know a open space around the barrel where those porting is, and the barrel's not actually cut into the uh, threads, or you're going to have a problem. I shouldn't say threads, cut into the lands and grooves, or you're going to have a problem. Um, this is why when you look at a macro, the macro has ports on the end, but the barrel doesn't really have anything to do with those ports, right? It kind of just runs through the ports and it redeflects gas. One of the things I want to jump back into here, and then we've got a couple of things I want to I want to show you guys. So one of the other things that I kind of skipped or want to or we missed and I want to talk about. Um, so one of the other reasons that we clean these up is because they're really filthy when they come off. And the idea between a chuck port and the idea between an end comp port, and this is kind of all in one conversation, is that those when the bullet comes down, it's the gas is being re redirected. We're not really getting that with this type of a setup, which is kind of where this this moves into the next one. So we've got a comp, a radian, a screw on, right? And then we've got something similar to this, which is just a ported barrel, like a like a 19C or a shield, right? That's got a port, and there's many many more out there, but those are two commons. And the idea is that 
Um, each one of those works a little bit different. A chuck pour or end comp really is redeflecting gases. And then a barrel that's been ported, whether it's been ported through us, another company, or a manufacturer, is really set up to where that... Um, that's really losing gas. So it's losing pressure between the chamber and where that hole is. So there is a difference in how those function. I wanna show you real quick in one of our videos what ours uh, looks like. And then you can kinda, I can be able to explain it a little bit better. So we've got a video of it really dirty right straight off the laser. And you can kinda see these edges and angles. And All right guys, well one of the reasons why this clip is so important right here, and I know it's gonna be hard to see, but it's kind of that our design that we've created is a little bit between the two of these styles. One is at the end of the barrel, that gas is being directed upward and the firearm is being directed downward. And then of course, in the middle where the barrels would be ported, that gas would be coming straight up. Ours is a little bit different. We are getting that internal porting of the barrel, but we're also getting that forward pressure forcing it down, right? So we're kind of we're kind of merging the both in, in this hybrid design where we're not really using or utilizing one versus the other. So the difference between them here a little bit is this. The end of the gun that has a, a pour in it is really forcing the nose of the gun downward as it shoots. It's redeflecting the gases and in, in it's almost dipping when you're shooting. You almost have to recompensate for that. Now a barrel that's been ported in the center is losing pressure as the round is actually leaving the firearm, right? So we're actually losing pressure. So in one case, if you kind of think of it like this, what's happening is uh, you shoot it with a chuck pour or a comp on the end and it's kind of, it's kind of, the gun wants to go like this, but really it's going like this. And that's what you would get a lot with a porting style that way. And then of course, with an internal port like this, you're getting a lot more pressure offward and you're getting a lot more of this, right? So as the gun goes back, you're feeling this is the change and not this or this is the change. It's a little bit different if you've shot both, you can tell one is more of a push back feeling and the other more one is more of a push down to your feet feeling. So there is a difference in which those function. Once again, they're just two different styles of what they, how they work and in the way they're designed. And ours is sort of in the middle. We're capitalizing on downward motion because we're giving a portion of our redirection that way. And then we're capitalizing on backward motion because we're losing pressure as well. So we're taking advantages of both and we're mixing them together in one design. So that's kind of one of the advantages of what you would get with that. I would encourage you uh, to kind of go with a setup like this, whether it's us or you buy a barrel. I say that for multiple reasons. One, let's say you have a gun that you, you carry all the time. Well, you can simply buy another barrel and you could put a non-ported in it and carry it if you feel more comfortable that way. Or you can, um, you know, take it to the range and put this barrel in it and run it. You don't have to take comps off. You don't have to undo, uh, you know, thread lockers that are on there like Loctite or any of that. None of that portion of the problem exists anymore, right? You can literally take the part you already own, don't have to buy an aftermarket part, modify it, put it back into your weapon, and then just replace the part if you wanna have more than one without making any other changes. It's a simple barrel swap. So you have that going for you with a setup like this. Now that's the same, once again, if you went through another company and had this done. I'm not saying that you know we you are creating something that the whole world has never seen or or doesn't know anything about. Like That's not 100% true. But the point being made here is we are, are creating and are offering a service that is very user friendly, right? So you don't have that extra cleanup of comps and stuff and or issues with holsters or this has come loose or that's twisted sideways like none of that exists with something like this something else to take note of with a design like this is that uh your springs we get a lot of those people that go hey man but you're gonna have to replace springs right technically no if you look at a manufactured pistol the 19c is a great example the shield is another great example the list goes on and on the idea here is if you were to take a look at a 19c and you looked at a part number for this 19C compensated gun versus the 19 regular gun, it's the same spring. Well, how can that be? One's ported and one's not, right? We see the same thing with the shield, right? So if you buy a shield that is a performance center with ports in it, it's the same part number as the shield that doesn't have a ported barrel, same one. And you know, you think to yourself, well, how could that be? One's losing gas. It is, but the point being made is that it's not losing enough to where a spring needs to be changed. When you start getting into a threaded barrel, you're talking about adding extra material. You're talking about adding an extra comp and or whatever this part may be. There's a lot more going on here. So when you do something like this, most of the time, nothing's going to change. There are no extra parts to buy, right? I'm not saying that you couldn't buy parts and get better functionality out of it, just like a suppressor. 
Maybe I want to run this booster. Maybe I want to run that ammo. Maybe something functions a little better. Maybe it sounds a little bit uh, greater because I'm doing something. You know, you can always go that path, but you shouldn't have to really go that path in most circumstances. And I say that lightly because there are people that shoot 115 grain and they may have to go to 124, at least till the barrel breaks in. Or they may find out that there is a minor change that they need to make, like they've got to change their front sight because it would, would have hung over the hole or something along those lines. So I'm not saying changes don't exist. I'm just saying that for the majority of people, if you pick up some 124 grain, there's your hint. You should be at least testing with that at the beginning. That's where is a good starting point. Then you can go back to your 115 grain once everything's broken, you've oiled it good, everything's been lubed, you're running it. Like start out with what we know is running, and that's 124 grain. If you are to modify things on your car, there may be additional changes required. You want to go with a different size tire, your old rims aren't going to work, right? You want to have something that en enhances the performance of your automobile, you may have to run more expensive fuel, right? So there are changes that may need to be made outside of the parameters of manufacturer specs. I don't think you're going to see that a lot in a case like this, but don't be surprised if you do have to go to 124 grain or my gun really likes this ammo versus that ammo, right? Until it breaks in. Those, those are all the kind of things that you might have to might have to go in and take into consideration. I want to talk to you about something else that we did a little bit touched on, but didn't really touch on. All right, guys. Well, as you know, we needed to go back to this video, right? We needed to talk about this a little bit more. Now that video was after they had sort of broke it in, right? So they already had it. They already ran some rounds through it. And that was kind of just running through it, showing you guys what it was all about. I want to start at the beginning. I want to show you guys um, what actually took place here was when we got that, we did the work, we gave it back. And we recommended that they fire some rounds through that gun to kind of just wear it in make sure everything's working like it's supposed to because we never really intended the barrels to be that aggressive right once again they'll support that kind of work but we never really said hey run this just abuse it we kind of said you need to slow it down a little bit and just make sure everything's okay so they did that they ran some ammo through it then they actually run an actual mag through it then they All right, NC engravers have done a few shots on semi. Let's see how it goes. That's it. Pretty good. Hell yeah. Run some run and gun kind of through it. So we're going to show you guys all that. Um, the story here is at the beginning, um, shot a couple. We, we didn't see it, but they shot some rounds. Then we see the first time that they shoot it at full auto. Um, that's kind of like under 100 rounds. So that's kind of like in the, in the first stages. And then um, I've got another target here that I'm going to show you. And that secondary target is about 400 rounds into it. Okay, so they're running and gunning. And then you can kind of see accuracy at 400 rounds. Now, once again, this is auto. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of a point and shoot, um, you know, is where that's at. So um, they have hundreds of rounds. I, at this point in time, since it's been a couple weeks, I don't know how many rounds they've had through this gun um i do know it's more than what the regular shooter would shoot in that kind of time frame just because of what you know capability they have uh, at the facility so it's kind of it's kind of a cool thing to see that um guys if you have any other questions i don't know to to the extent of how this this person may or may not answer those questions feel free to leave a question um they may come back and do a follow-up and they may be able to answer something it may just be something that i don't know i may not have the answer what i can tell you is 124 magtech um, the secondary target that shows just kind of like one group pattern that was at 400 rounds um, so that's a good starting point for a lot of you guys that are like hey I'm going to get it back I don't really know what to expect maybe you want to get a couple boxes of ammo maybe you want to get some 124s maybe you, you, know, you want to go that direction and go from there we would encourage you to follow along you know we really would there's an absolute ton of content um, that's going to be coming out. We've got a PDP that we're doing a porting on, which is we've got another gunsmith local to the area that's going to be doing some testing. So you're going to want to watch that. We would encourage you to subscribe, share it, right? I mean, this is, this is an ongoing service that's going to go over and flow over into a lot of things other than Glock. 
the PDP videos coming out. We've also got a Canic Rival video coming out. Um, I don't know to the extent of the shooting on that. That may have to get tagged into another YouTube account that somebody's going to show that being used. Um, but we will be able to show the work. We'll be able to explain it. That's a pretty sweet gun, and it's going to be hard maybe to modify it to make it make sense with what already exists. So there's going to be a lot of other stuff coming, um, coming out, a lot of other stuff being revealed and how it works and what can we expect and things like that. I do want to give you a couple of warnings. One, we're not offering any barrel porting on uh, aftermarket barrels. We're just not doing it because we don't know what they're made of. It has to be a factory barrel. That's pretty much number one. Number two, we're not going to cover any wear and tear of your barrel, meaning you got to expect that these ports are going to erode, right? It's like a tire. If it's moving, it's wearing. So are these ports. If stuff's coming out of the ports, it's going to be wearing, right? So you can't really buy a comp running on your gun and be like, hey, man, it's pitted or whatever the case is. The manufacturer's kind of like, yeah, we, we kind of figured that since it's a tool. So that's the same thing for you guys. We don't anticipate you're going to run into any issues. But if you're one of these guys that runs an absolute ton of stuff and you come back a year later and go, man, my... My ports really aren't working like they're supposed to, and it used to work amazing, and now I'm not really happy with it. You need to have another barrel processed. Um, we can help you through that process. We also are probably not, for the most part, going to be offering porting on existing slides that already have a window unless we're modifying that window, right? So the Canic Rival is a great example. It already has a window on the top. We're going to be opening that window up to support those cuts. But what we're not going to do is make a barrel or have you send your barrel in and give it back and you can just fit it to your gun. It's not really going to work that way. We're not encouraging you to go and buy other slides or cheaper slides or aftermarket slides and then run ported barrels in them. It's just not how our business is going to work, at least not as of right now. Maybe that will change. Once again, this video could be out for years and you may see that change over time. But as of right now, it is very specific to um, a cut that we've made a, um, and then a barrel port that we've made for that cut. Kind of a kind of a setup. So we want to make sure that there's some clarity on that. Um, yeah, other than that, it's pretty much straightforward. You know, a lot of this content is going to come out first on Instagram and YouTube. You're going to see a lot of the, the comments through there. If you want to know more about us as a company, feel free to go to Google, read those reviews. We have hundreds of reviews. There's, we're, we're pushing almost onto 300 now in the last three years. So um, there's a lot a lot going on there. If you want to feel get a feel for what it is we offer, the turnaround time, the quality of work, the communication, that's exactly where you're going to find it. You're going to hear that from the mouths of the individuals that have already done the work through it. So very, very cool. Once again, uh, there's going to be some content at the end of the video. Uh, feel free to you know share this uh you know do your thing and um just let us know if you need anything of course we're gonna have some other videos coming out with some barrel porting all right we get okay mag maybe not that that seems closer to more appropriate all right you ready yeah. Stand by. Six point seven seventy six.